This chef is cooking meat, but this meat is special. It's quail, though there's something different about it. This meat was grown from the cell up. We're going to tell you a story about why meat needs to be redesigned and the insights that are driving this innovation. Our food system needs to change. The bad news is that we are not doing much better in terms of emission. This is Matthew Panis, Deputy Director of the Climate Change Cluster at the University of Technology, Sydney. The main source of emissions, you know, transport, energy and food. Food is actually a quarter of the greenhouse emission um, is, is linked to our food system, you know. And of that quarter, more than half comes from animal-based foods. Cultivated meat, uh, plant-based meat, uh, and things like that um, make it better, you know. Culturing meat in a lab has the potential to be much more efficient, cutting down on the land use and emissions of conventional agriculture. It provides us with an opportunity to, um, yeah, to do a massive step forward um, against climate change, you know, like by changing the food system. The problem is in between. How do you, how do you really create? Um, an uptake from the vast majority of the population, you know? We have strong feelings towards food. It defines our cultures, it makes up our identities, and it's personal. Food is really intimate, so it's hard to redesign. We spoke to the people taking on this challenge. Vow is a cultured meat company that became an overnight sensation when they released the mammoth meatball. In the simplest terms, Vow takes the cell from an animal, cultures it in a bioreactor, almost like brewing beer, eventually ending up with meat that's ready to eat. But what we found interesting was Vow isn't trying to just replicate existing meats. We're not trying to replicate beef, chicken and pork. This is Sarah Elise Flint, a product manager at Vow. When you're trying to, say, make a new burger that's just a bit more sustainable and tastes the same, then it suffers from a couple of problems. The first is cost benchmarking. Consumers compare it to how it costs already and expect it to be at that price. And then the second is sensory anchoring. People expect it to taste the same, and if it doesn't quite live up to those expectations, well, it's a bit meh, isn't it? And because of these expectations, Val decided to redesign food in a different way. We're not just trying to create new meat. We're trying to create a whole new category of meat. A good comparison here is from the cereal aisle. Early cereals were sold based on the grains they contained. The ingredient was the focus. In fact, Cheerios used to be called Cheery Oats. We see Cheerios as being this really interesting example of moving away from the ingredient of the thing towards a brand that represents the experience. What if we could create food for them that's tastier, that's more nutritious? A steak that helps you sleep better at night or wagyu salmon fillet that's optimized for longevity. It's not just more sustainable, but it's better for you. It's more cost effective. It's doing things for you rather than just for the planet. I think that's when we will get cut through as an industry. People will start to choose things selfishly, not because they're more sustainable, even though they are as well. But not everyone's on board. People saying, I don't understand this. I don't trust this. And so there's this big design piece there. You're not only designing that product and the way it feels and tastes and experience, but you also design this story. You're designing the way that people hear this way it might fit into their culture. It ties into this idea that food has always been designed. All food has had human intervention in it in one way or another. Like most things in our world, food is designed. It involves making choices, conscious decisions. The best we can do is make informed, intentional decisions by understanding who we're serving and why. Continuously going to our customers, understanding what do they love beyond just what they say they love? What are the stories and narratives that come into that? What are the sensory attributes that people find ridiculously appealing about current meat? Understanding deeply what those needs, beliefs, desires, wants are, and then using that as a platform to ideate how can we do things better? We're making these videos because we want to tell stories about insights. The insights that designers, researchers, people who make things for other people are using to reshape our world. 
Be sure to subscribe for more stories about insights. Sources are in the description and you can contact us at editorial at dovetail.com.